Lesser Light by Matthew Draper. Chapter Twenty Two. New Year's Eve, the day old things end, and new begin. We were all in place when Sebastian arrived, and he brought Gabriel with him. We had decided Jeremy and Christine should go ahead with the wedding, and so Dylan and I were dressed in our groomsmen black suits with white shirts and yellow ties, welcoming guests to the ceremony. Our eyes peeled for our old friend. We were bouncers as well as ushers, and we would bounce Sebastian away on sight. Jeremy was nervous, ready to enter a new stage of his life. A couple of sips of Lagavulin Scotch whisky had settled his nerves, but he still paced back and forth. I had tracked Dylan down in his hotel room after speaking to Jeremy last night, and I apologised for my reaction on the train. I overreacted," I told him, accepting blame. I didn't quite think I deserved. You know me; it's what I do. Friends, we had hugged it out and put a plan into motion to ensure the wedding would not be ruined. We would talk about it more another time. I still wasn't ready. Downstairs at the hotel on New Year's Eve, a conference room had been transformed into a ceremony space. Rows of chairs and a central aisle, the seats covered in white satin with green bows and red baubles, styled to represent boughs of holly. Family members were settling into place, choosing a side. There were more hats and fascinators on the bride's side than the groom's. Our friends from the sky gazers study group at St Michael's were spread evenly on both sides. We had decided not to involve anyone other than the central circle in our plan to prevent Sebastian's attempted return of Gabriel's cultish grip over our lives. Jeremy hugged colleagues from his office who had made the trip. I was amazed so many had adjusted their New Year's plans to celebrate this bride and groom. Maybe it is possible to care and be cared for by your community without a toxic dependence. I checked my watch. It was nearly noon. Christine would arrive shortly with Lizzie as both her personal bodyguard and maid of honor. I exchanged a glance with Dylan. We had hoped to apprehend Sebastian before the service started, but there was still no sign. Maybe he would not show up after all. A text from Lizzie let me know they were on their way. Five minutes. I peeked through the conference room doors to give Jeremy a thumbs up. He visibly relaxed. Nothing was going to go wrong. We were located at the tail end of a corridor and would be able to spot anyone entering. There was only one other door linked from this hall into a small bar, currently unmanned. After the ceremony, we would all move across for arrival drinks, while the ceremony room was changed into a dining area for the celebratory wedding breakfast. I had seen the hotel's waiting team buzzing around preparing the space earlier. But they had left us alone for the ceremony itself. Here, another text let us know the bride had arrived. I pictured her stepping out of the car in a custom gown, her veil trailing behind her. Lizzie in a dress the same yellow as our ties, hurrying around the bonnet to lend an arm to the bride as they entered the hotel. A figure appeared in the corridor, sweeping towards us. Christine, Sebastian. Tell me why he was dressed as a priest in a gold cassock embroidered with angelic symbols up the front and down the sleeves. Talk about upstaging the bride! He seems to think you could hide under the trappings of faith. He had his arms raised, already deeply entranced in a repetitive prayer. Gabriel to my left side, Gabriel to my right. He did not appear to even see us, rigidly walking toward the ceremony room. Lesser light to rule the night. I saw my ring on his finger, glowing. Here we go. Dylan closed the doors to the ceremony as Sebastian approached. At first, he hadn't understood the threat I claimed Sebastian possessed, but he had faith in my judgment. 
I told him the last thing any of us needed was to be dragged back into the worship of Gabriel, and he agreed. We stood our ground. I don't know what he's promised you, but it's not real, I began. As he approached, I attempted to reach out and place my hand on Sebastian's outstretched arm, but he didn't slow, turning his open palm towards me and slamming me backwards into a wall as he marched on. His eyes were rolled back. Dylan was next to attack, ducking under Sebastian's shoulder to lock his elbow around Sebastian's neck in a loop, dragging him down and backwards away from the doors of the ceremony room. I joined him, pushing myself off the wall and gripping Sebastian's left arm, hoping to guide them back up the corridor as he struggled to be freed. We stabilised him between us, moving him from the gathered friends and relatives beyond the closed doors. I hoped Lizzie and Christine would be held up at the entrance and not run into us exiting with our deluded friend. Before we could reach the end of the hall, another figure entered. Let him go, boys. Morgan, out of breath and hair in disarray from running to get here on time, crashed into the corridor ahead of us. He held his phone out towards us, upside down with the microphone recording, he had a podcast on the go, transmitting live. Listeners, I am here live with Gabriel's vessel, Sebastian, and he is carrying a message from the big man himself. Tell us, what is the vision? What message from the Archangel for the fallen earth? Morgan managed to insert himself in between us, disrupting Dylan's grip and disentangling Sebastian, who began his zombie-like walk towards the ceremony again. I made a dive for Sebastian's feet under the cassock, attempting to trip him, but Morgan kicked at me, barely breaking the concentration of his podcaster voice. We are coming live from Edinburgh, where the vessel of Gabriel is making his way with a visionary message for the people of God, and you can be the first to hear it and respond. Is he calling you to release the lesser light? He was trailing Sebastian, who steadily approached the wedding venue. Oi! Lizzie's voice broke into the broadcast as she and Christine emerged from behind us. Morgan, I'll give you a statement for your podcast. How about your listeners look up your company files and see how deep your corruption goes? With Morgan momentarily distracted, Dylan and I managed to clamber to our feet and reconvene on Sebastian's strong figure, pushing him bodily through the only other door off the hallway, into the empty bar. Sebastian stumbled against a set of wooden bar stools, sending them reeling. I slammed the door shut behind us. I knew Lizzie would finish Morgan off with a number of home truths, and with any luck, get Christine down the aisle to continue the wedding, while Dylan and I attempted to keep Sebastian occupied in here. I knew Sebastian had the advantage, though. His faith still kept him connected to the angelic Gabriel figure, while Dylan and I only had our personal strength. Sebastian stopped chanting, and for a moment broke out of his reverie long enough to realise where he was. The moment he stopped chanting, Dylan drove his shoulder into Sebastian's chest, wrapping his arms around his waist to wrestle him onto the floor. I knelt beside him so he could hear me as he struggled against Dylan's grip. "'Whatever Gabriel has put into your head, it's not true,' I insisted. "'He's using you to put us all in danger.' I remembered the last time we had all been connected to Gabriel. Whatever he was, certainly not an angel, more like a trauma link drawn into the real world by our faith connection. Wherever he came from, letting him wreck havoc within our world was not the right thing to do. For a moment, Sebastian's pupils returned to normal. He blinked free to look at us. Then he was gone, fully disappeared. Dylan stumbled as the body he was holding down vanished. I'm going after him, I declared. I was sure Gabriel had taken him to the same place we had all gone years ago, to the moon. I no longer had access to G's power, but I remembered Dylan's explanation from the train. For him, it was never the power of G, but the power of love which had fueled our connection and the electricity between us. I turned to face him. I'm so sorry. I didn't understand until now, but I think I get it. Give me your hand. I love you, Dylan. And love connects. 
Dylan reached out for me. And the moment our skin touched, a flash of warmth and light flowed from him, up my arms, into my chest, propelling me back. Our hands released, but there was a glowing string of light between us, holding the connection strong. I flickered out of existence, leaving just a glowing red aura behind. Lesser Light is an online event. Head to lesserlight.blog to join in the comments section or share this story on Facebook, Twitter, Hive or your favourite social media platform. The Lesser Light paperback is available from lulu.com or other booksellers or you can download the ebook now. But remember, no spoilers until New Year's Day. The story is fictional, but if the elements about trauma, cults or recovery have affected you, you can find helplines at lesserlight.blog.